Okay, you may now proceed, Chair. Andrew, I think you should first call the nominations, Chair. That's fine, Chair. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this uh, licensing subcommittee on Thursday, 24th of September, uh, starting at 7 o'clock. Moving into the first uh, agenda item, um, I will briefly read out a protocol for remote hearings, uh, and then I will invite the members of the subcommittee um, to elect a chair. So I'll just run through that protocol first, and then I'll ask the, the two members to elect a chair. So the protocol for remote hearings is only speak when invited to by the chair. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand and direct all communication via the chair. Will everyone please ensure that their mics are muted when they are not speaking, apart from the chair, who does not need to mute their mic at any stage to ensure the meeting is conducted effectively. When speaking, be succinct and do not see the allocated time frames highlighted at the start of the hearing and contained within the agenda pack. If you are referring to a specific page or picture in a report, refer to the page number. If you are having any technical difficulties, please use the chat function in Google Meet to alert the meeting or dial in on the phone number and using the pin provided within the invite or on the council website within the meetings page. Please do not use the chat function for putting formal questions to the subcommittee. Any persistent disruptive behavior will result in removal from the meeting. If there is more than one application, parties are advised that each application is heard in turn, as set out in the agenda pack. The subcommittee will not retire after each application. The parties can contact the licensing service to be informed of the decision the following day or can simply wait until they are notified of the decision. Applicants and all other parties will be asked to leave the proceedings after the item is concluded. Once all applications have been considered, any remaining parties will be asked to log out of the hearing. Please do so promptly that the councillors will have the opportunity to deliberate and make a decision on each application they have heard. Each party will be notified of the decision within five working days. Okay, and moving on then, I'd like to invite Councillor Peters and Councillor Bell to uh, elect a chair. So I nominate uh, Councillor Bell. Um, thank you very much. Um, good evening again, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. As Andrew mentioned, we have apologies for absence from Councillor Penny Wright, who is due to be the third member of the committee, but cannot make it. And so the committee is now for myself and Councillor James Peters. James, make a quick wave, everyone. There will be the people making the decision at the end of the night. Uh, are there any declarations of interest? None from me. None. I know some of you have been to our hearings before and some haven't. There is a procedure set out in the numbered page one of an agenda if you either downloaded one or obtained a printed copy. But I'll go run through it very briefly. So for each item, there will be introduction from the licensing service. That will be followed by the applicant making their case for the application. That will be followed by any responsible authorities making their representations. And then that's the fifth stage is any other persons making their representations. At step six, there's space for discussion between the parties, including the suggestions of different amendments or conditions that might make applications more acceptable. And at step seven, I'll ask everyone to make closing remarks in the same order as initial remarks. Then after any clarifications, we will uh, make our decisions. The time limits within our procedure normally allow five minutes for each of those steps. I will be flexible and say double those to 10 minutes each for the applicant and the objectors in this case, but please don't go on much beyond that. I will have to stop you eventually. As the officer said, normally we would return and give you our decision if we could, but we will attempt to put it online as soon as we possibly can. But check the item called calendar of meetings on council website and sooner or later, hopefully early next week, the decision will appear there. You'll be able to download it from there. I'm going to take the hearings in the order they're on the agenda. There were queries about possibly moving them around, but 
I'm going to stick with the order that's published. Are the police available for that hearing? I cannot see Kerry Ryan or anyone else. Sorry, Chair, it's myself, PC Atkins. Sorry, D David Atkins, right? Yes. So the first hearing is Soul Local 175 Mare Street. And we're expecting to hear from Mr. Myra Killich on behalf of the applicant. Mr. Killich, are you online? Yeah, I can see your icon. I can't hear you yet. Well, activate the microphone. Chair, it's, uh, in fact, it, Chair, it's me, uh, well, Chair, who's tasked with that. Uh, I understood Mr. Killich had informed uh, you that uh, I would be. On. He hasn't, but yeah. that's all right. Mm -hmm. I'm prepared. So, Mr. Craig, you're representing the applicant in this case. I am, Chair, yes. Thank yeah. you. Okay. And the police are responding as responsible authority. And they they're, are. Really, they're the only other party we have. On that application, they are chair. So, uh, Miss Suba, could you please introduce the application for us? Uh, I, I will indeed, chair, and I'll try and keep to the. No, first, it's, it's the lesson officer first. Oh, forgive me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. So, Mr. Ramana, can you introduce, please? Thank you, chair. Um, licensing service received an application for a premises license under Section 17 of the Licensing Act for 175 Mass Street for the hours stated in the agenda. The applicant has provided supporting documents which have been circulated. Only police representation remains. I have nothing else to add. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Now it's you. I'm very grateful, Chair. Uh, this is uh, an application for uh, the grant of a premises license uh, for simply for off sales uh, between the hours of uh, 8 a.m. and 11 p.m., which is within your uh, LP4 core hours. I think initially it was a a, 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 a little uh, further than that at weekends, but it's been it's been uh, uh, trimmed back now. And uh, as your officer has just uh, pointed out, there's an observation uh, from planning, uh, which I understand is in uh, planning application is is in motion on that. But um, in terms of the uh, uh, any representation, simply uh, the the, uh, the Met um, are the only uh, remaining a application ha discussions having. Uh, been entered into uh, with, with one or two other uh, responsible authorities, namely uh, licensing and uh, trading standards. Um, uh, Chair, I don't know if you have the opportunity of viewing the video that's been provided. Yes, we did. Okay, I, I, I perhaps we'll start on that then. Yeah, and I'm very grateful that you've taken the time uh, to view that. Um, uh, obviously, I've watched it as well. I would submit that it's um, a very well presented uh, premises, it's well lit. It's to a very high spec. Um, uh, you can see as well, social distancing measures are in, are in situ already. I understand the premises has been trading uh, uh, without um, the benefit of a premises license for uh, a, 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 couple of, a couple of weeks or so. I might not be precise on that, but it's certainly a short period. Uh, uh, and as you can see from the video, there's no um, alcohol at the moment, clearly, because there's no authorization uh, in place. You can also see um, a, a loss of, um, uh, fresh produce in the premises as well and the reason i'm i'm pointing that out is clearly um the police representations touch on uh, the local area and concerns there are and, and i would submit that it's clear from that footage what is already there that this isn't going to be a, a an off license it's it's simply going to be a convenience store that has uh, the facility uh, to sell alcohol um, as an ancillary part of its um uh, uh, overall um, uh, 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 business. Um, I understand um, the Met's concerns. Uh, we all uh, have to deal, uh, uh, particularly in metropolitan areas, and particularly in certain parts of London, with um, uh, issues around um, street drinkers and clearly people who live in a shelter like this will, will, to some extent, fall into that category. But I have to say, I've uh, I've spoken to uh, the applicant, uh, had a conference with him at, at some length, and he does have a pretty impressive, although not a, a huge, hugely steeped in the uh, uh, in, in the uh, grocery business, he does have a very impressive uh, CV in terms of the skills that would be required um, to tackle the issues that clearly um, are prevalent in the area. He was um, a prison custody officer. Um, for three years, clearly that um, 
is a role that that, that requires um, dealing with uh, confrontational situations, and anyone would uh, uh, dispute that. He did help hold a SIA badge for a number of years. He worked part time as a doorman. That badge, just to be clear, has lapsed. It hasn't been revoked. It just, uh, it, but he he is um, he, he got he basically met his wife and. Uh, she asked that he no longer um, involved himself in, in working on doors. And he's also been a, a bus driver uh, for 15 years. And, and I don't think, again, anyone would dispute that bus drivers are uh, routinely, unfortunately, required to deal with um, confrontational uh, uh, situations. So uh, he's 45 years of age. Um, he's lived in Hackney uh, for 33 years as well. So he knows the local area well. He knows, uh, and I've spoken to him as well. Uh, he and he may, maybe you have some questions for him. Of course, he is here. Um, he 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 is well known in the area. He knows um, most of the local uh, uh, street drinkers, um, uh, and you can see from the, the 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 video footage that you've seen that it's very impressive. The fit out. He's actually put his entire life savings along with um, his partner, who's the DPS, his business partner, I should say, who's the DPS. Um, uh, into this business, and he merely, merely seeks um, uh, the benefit of a, a premises license um, uh, to um, accentuate the the, the 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 offer that he um, uh, enhance the offer he has um, uh, on display. But just to invite you, if I may, because it's clearly important, particularly in a, in a race application like this, to turn to the agenda pack uh, under conditions. Um, uh, uh, are um, uh, contained at, at, at paragraph five. I'm afraid my um, agenda pack isn't paginated, but it's one, two, three, it's page four. Page six, and a six, very well, thank you. I'm grateful. So uh, I'm not going to read them out verbatim, particularly because I've only got 10 minutes, um, but clearly. Uh, extremely comprehensive list of conditions relating to CCTV uh, and retention thereof and downloading thereof, staff training, passport checks for uh, employees, um, uh, 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 incident lock refusals book, um, usual signage around people leaving the premises, um, again training around um, a, a sale of alcohol, and perhaps most personally at 16 in relation to um, the, the concerns that the Met have raised uh, is um, uh, um, 16, you've got uh, no beers, lagers or ciders exceeding 5.5%. So that's targeted towards that particular um, uh, concern, as is number 17, that no miniature bottles of spirits of 50 millilitres or less uh, shall be sold or supplied um, uh, at the premises. And again, any alcohol sold must be in a securely um, a sealed container and then container. And then it goes on uh, equally further to address uh, matters around training again uh, and, and issues clearly that have been raised by environmental health in relation to nuisance, waste um, uh, 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 and, and, uh, and such things. Uh, Mr Killich himself, who, who is on the line, uh, as you can see, has supplied, um, uh, gone to a lot of effort actually, has supplied, um, and clearly you're dealing with this application, but um, it, it's right to say that there are a number of other licensed premises um, uh, in the area. I'll briefly just touch on those. I'm not going to go into them in huge detail, but you've got uh, a number. If you've got the map there, Chair. I do. I do very well. Um, thank you. You obviously see where the homeless link is. You've got number one, the 24 hour license premises just behind it. Uh, Appendix two, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, it's not actually. Um, uh, for the, sorry, there is another 24-hour license, and that's at number two, which is just, I guess, below uh, where where uh, the homeless link is. Um, uh, and then at, at three, uh, appendix three, uh, and it's right to say that uh, licenses under appendix is three, four, five, uh, and six in particular are all much of a muchness. You can see where they're located on the map. But it's also right, and it's presumably because there is some antiquity, um, virtually no conditions on there, which you know is not a criticism. That's because probably presumably because they've not been reviewed, in fact, and they've been in situ for some time. But um, uh, th th there are a number of licenses there, and they fall within uh, the the hours, the the, the core hours too. So um, I, I would submit on behalf of the applicant, given his 
um, uh, 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 impressive background um, uh, and he speaks very well uh, and you may have some questions for him uh, I'm sure um, the video that you've been shown which shows the care effort level of investment that's gone into the premises the well-tailored conditions the relatively modest hours that fall within your um, statement of licensing policy um, at core hours um, uh, so for all those reasons um, uh, and given the uh, further conditions that have been added uh, I, I would submit um, that you can uh, uh, quite properly uh, uh, grant uh, uh, the, the application um, uh, looking at the police representations obviously they've got concerns about the area uh, more generally but I, I don't believe this business as it as it's presented to you today uh, uh, should give any um, real meaningful uh, or substantive concerns um, that that people within that hostel are a likely to go into these premises particularly with the conditions that, that are there that don't subsist on other licenses um, but also because of the quality of the, of the fit out in fact it, it's not the type of premise that perhaps would attract them um, uh, uh, ordinarily and clearly somebody who's invested that amount of money in, in a business um, is, is somebody who's going to be keen to keep the quality of customer as high as possible and and and, and, and behave in a responsible manner given the money that's been invested so uh, for all those reasons uh, I would invite you to uh, grant the application I don't know what I've done on the 10 minutes front I've got a feeling it's about there or thereabouts yes quite good thank you very much I'm grateful can I just clarify one small thing? On the plan you submitted, um, it, can, it includes the basement in the licensable area. Say that again, sorry. On the plan submitted, it includes the basement in the licensable area. Right. So it doesn't need to be in the licensable area, does it? No, I think that's right. No, um, it's not meant to be. from it are to have any functions that are in it. No, uh, I presume, I mean, you can have, perhaps the, it, it may be that the applicant can, can respond more purposefully to that because because I did ask that question. But certainly I would agree, Chair, uh, and you have it within your power to exclude that if, if, if you if you deem it fit. And um, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, if licensable activities aren't, particularly for an off-license, uh, yes, absolutely. If it's storage, it shouldn't be part of the licensable area, no question. Okay. Councillor Peters, any questions? Or shall we go on to um, well, no, largely that was going to be my question, but just just to clarify the um, supplementary um, uh, evidence that we've had um, sent to us, um, which is uh, consists of this list of um, other licensed premises in the area. Um, so the point of that is to demonstrate that there are lots of other premises in the area with fewer condition, with relatively few conditions as to uh, when alcohol can be sold, uh, including a number of twenty four hour premises. So yes. the, 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 your point is that adding another one won't make much difference. Is that the point? Particularly one that has as stringent conditions as this and, and, and is of this quality, um, uh, yes, is, is, is the answer. I, 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 I frankly don't see it adding um, uh, to, to the concerns that the police have raised. And, and it's right to say as well that, that, that the hostel themselves haven't, haven't put a representation in. So, yeah, and, and I just make one other point about the map, maybe, and I'm sure that um, Peter Atkins um, will um, speak to this. The homeless link is shown on your map, but as is clear from the, um, I think it's a witness statement, is it, uh, from one of the um, ward officers, there are a number of other hostels in that area. It's not just that building. Yes. Well, that, that's 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 fair comment but that that's the one that they focused on in terms of their representation so it's right that the applicant responds to that in particular but that, that that's a valid point okay. i don't know where they are on this map by the way i, I and maybe you do councillor but um yeah they're, they're, they're in very close proximity very well okay pc atkins please uh, Good evening, Chair. Um, apologies, I'll, I'll try and make it as brief as I can. Um, our representations are focused on, on the problems we do face in the area, and I've submitted two statements from local officers. Um, the other shelters uh, that were just raised, one is on Well Street, which is just opposite Appendix 7 on the map at 23 to 25. And the, um, 
other centres are on Tudor Road, which is uh, just below uh, Appendix 2, I believe, looking at the map. Um, but, uh, so we do have a number of issues in the air with street drinkers, uh, and our, our, our representation appeared based on another uh, licensed premises in the area um, is, is, is likely to increase the issues we're having there and not um, them, so to speak. Um, apologies, I'm losing my words. Um, so, I mean, that is it's just a cumulative impact we do have an issue with um, the concentration of licensed premises. Um, and as the, as the local officers have said, they do move on street drinkers a number of times a day and they are having problems in the area. Um, that's what we thought it right that we should be uh, putting representations in against this application. Okay, but did Mr. Craig have a point in that most of the others have historic licenses with very few conditions? It would be surely better to challenge those and get conditions added on to those instead of applying to block this business which seems to be doing all it can to comply with best practice. Yeah, I mean, I've not seen the video that, that was referred to by Mr. Craig. Um, However, I mean, that, that is something we can look at long term when problems are raised by local safe and over teams to us um, in relation to certain premises. However, I don't think that adding another premises is adding to alcohol doesn't solve the issue. We may have lost Councillor Bell briefly. Um, Ms. North, can you advise what we should do? Uh, yeah, um, Mario, are you able to check on Councillor Bell? He's frozen at the moment, so um, we will just, we'll just stop the meeting um, for a few moments um, until he rejoins. If we could just um, wait a few minutes, or not, not formally adjourn, but if we could just hold. Thank you. Oh, there he is. Okay, good. Apologies, everyone. My network connection went down, as you probably all guessed. Very sorry about that. Not much I can do about it. Um, Stacey Atkins, when I left, you were applying to the point about well, that might not be better to encourage other premises to take more conditions on board. Could you repeat whatever you said then? Yes, Chair. I, I was making the point that. Yeah, when we, when we do have con uh, problems raised with particular venues, uh, we can look at them and if need be, they can go to review. However, I wouldn't suggest that another uh, premises adding to the alcohol in the area is necessarily a good idea. Um, it, it's just going to, we believe it's just going to add to the cumulative impact in the area. Um, we don't believe that deal with other, we can, as so we can deal with these venues when they are causing issues. But the problems we're having in the area isn't with a particular venue, it's with street drinkers. Okay, Councillor Peters, any questions or points? Um, no, other than, uh, and this might be straying into the discussion part of the meeting, um, uh, Mr. Craig uh, pointed to the applicant's uh, background and his ability to handle uh, trouble in his uh, on his premises. But I understand from the tone or of the content of the um, uh, witness statements from the ward officers that um, uh, trouble on premises is not really the issue, it's street drinking. Right, right. Yeah, just for clarity, I have kind of launched into discussion phase anyway, so I think okay. we can move on. Can you respond to that? Do you want me to respond, sorry? Uh, no, um, uh, PC Atkins. Sorry, forgive me. 
Well, you are on mute. Okay. Apologies, um, I didn't realise I was still on mute. Uh, yes, it, it is not a problem with the running of the premises. As I said, it is the street drinking area and the problems we're seeing on the streets, um, which have been raised for us by the local safe neighbourhood teams and the local officers in the area. So the conditions, for example, not allowing strong loggers, that doesn't give you any reassurance or enough, or not enough reassurance to accept this application. Uh, whilst I agree that the, the conditions preventing a strong lager, lagers um, will, will, will aid the situation, um, I don't think it is exclusively um, strong lagers, lagers that people will drink. Um, if if you are of mind and you do have an addiction, and you have an addiction to alcohol, you are going to get what you can. I would suggest. Yeah. Okay, so for us, it's basically I can't. I think we've covered the issues it's weighing up the applicants rights and the fact that it's a relatively minor addition to the overall availability of alcohol in the area against your concerns but even a minor addition is an addition so i think we have to weigh those two up and come to a conclusion i'm not really sure there are any other facts we need to establish james anything you want to add no in that case, I'd like the parties to sum up. Um, Mr. Craig, do you want to sum up the path of your comments? Yeah, yeah, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, it's not in a cumulative impact area, so uh, there's not a rebuttable presumption. That doesn't mean you can't, you've got to obviously look at the, the, the area that any premises is situated in, but it, it does change the flavour of the um, uh, 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 application. And, and, and in particular, the licensing authority themselves haven't um, uh, made any representations. I would just make a point about. Um, his background i mean it's not just about dealing with confrontational situations and perhaps i focus on that a little bit more much but to deal with street drinking you've got to be robust you've got to be strong you've got to be able to say no you've got to be able to be firm with people and 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 and, and, and that i guess that's the point that i somewhat inelegantly made um so i'll ju just make that point now um and that, the other thing i would say is yes there is a problem with street drinking in the area but that's not the applicant's fault he's trying to invest in the area make it better bring a quality establishment into the premises where alcohol is not the core part of the business it's just an ancillary uh, not saying it's not significant otherwise we wouldn't be sat here but uh, you know he's trying to make the area better and, and one would hope that that would maybe in some small way uh, help help the community more more widely so you are right chair it is a inevitably uh, most of these applications are it's it's, it's balancing out the legitimate commercial, commercial needs of the applicant against the the, the, the you know the, the the genuine concerns that the police have but i would say given the nature of the application the applicant's background the the the, the relatively limited hours the extensive conditions all those factors combined i, I would submit that you can be uh, confident that, that this won't uh, add um, to the concerns uh, that the uh, metropolitan police have Thank you for listening. Is that, uh, uh, it's all gone a bit quiet. Could, could people hear that, all that? Uh, no, we, we could hear it. I think yeah, thank you. may have yep, dropped off again. So we'll have to pause briefly while he rejoins. I'm not gonna have to do it all again, am I? No, thank you, thank you, Mr. Craig. We did hear everything you said. Um, we right. are having some technical difficulties. No, no. Just bear with us for a few minutes. These are crazy then... times for all of us. Don't worry. We're just all gonna. Give, there's got to be a bit of give and take, so it's fine. Um, in the meantime, um, PC Atkins, if you want to start thinking about what you want to say and summing up, um, so that you're ready for when Councillor Bell rejoins. Mario, are you looking into the technical issues? I hope that's in hand. I suspect he is, which is why he's not answering.
my apologies again. Obviously, it dropped out again. Uh, it's very embarrassing, but it's not much I can do. I assure you, I paid the bill, I'm not getting anyone else's Wi Fi. It is all done. But Craig, you were speaking about the client's ability to resolve difficult situations. You're on mute. You're on mute. That's unusual for me. Okay, that must have been a relief for everybody. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, I'll, 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 I'll repeat, uh, 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 apologies to everybody else, but it's right, I do that on behalf of my client. So yes, um, I, I was just making the point that it, it isn't just about confrontational situations. To deal with street drinkers, to deal with people in, in those situations, you've got to be firm, you've got to be robust, you, you've got to be able to say no. And so it isn't just dealing with conversation situations, it's being strong enough to, 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 to deal with those challenges that you face. And I would submit with, with, with that background, um, he um, uh, is somebody who um, is, is, is likely to be able to um, uh, address that, and more than likely, in fact. Um, uh, the other points I made, Chair, um, uh, uh, we didn't realise you'd gone, by the way, so I, I, I went off on, did my usual uh, waffling on for ages. Um, just to make the point, it's not an accumulative impact area. Um, and, and, and also, it's... It's not, not, not criticism me. I, please, I've got a difficult job to do. I understand that, but it's not my client's fault that these problems exist in the area. And what he's trying to do, he's actually trying to make the area better by investing in it and, and, and providing um, um, what is a, clearly a nice, well turned out um, um, establishment that, that he spent his, as I said, he's spent his uh, life savings on. So I, I just make the overall point that there clearly are concerns in the area, but given the quality of the establishment, the hours that are being applied for, the conditions that are in situ, his background, the fact it's not going to be an overwhelming part uh, of the business, uh, and the fact he's trying to improve the area, you can see that by investing in it. For all those reasons, I think you can you can you can be sure that um, these premises of themselves, given all that I've said, um, won't add to the concerns uh, that, that the Met have had. I think does that cover everything I said before? Thank you very much. Right, there we go. All right, thank yeah, you. Could you find any, give us the Met's position? I think you're muted. My apologies. Um, uh, our, our position will pretty much remain the same. And whilst I appreciate the, the points Mr. Craig has raised about the provisions that have been put into place with the applicant and the applicant's background and it's not lost in us that people are trying to invest in the area and we we do appreciate that and it is is only right that the area should be up and coming our concerns still lay within the street drinking the area and should the addition to alcohol and the difficulties that local officers have raised to us and the issues they face while they're on patrol and the complaints they do have from residents okay thank you very much any further any final clarifications because Peter? No, thank you yeah Okay, so we will try and come to a decision as soon as possible. As I've said, if you want to check back on our website under calendar of meetings, an item cryptically called printed decisions will appear sooner or later, probably Tuesday or so, and you'll get the decision there. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. And you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So for three swords, I have in attendance for the applicant, I have an Adam Foster. Is he here? You wave if you're here. Yeah. Is Natalie Adams also attending? Hi. And Wilson Digby. You're over there. And I know Mr. Hopkins is your consultant. Are you speaking, Mr. Hopkins, or someone else? I can't hear you at the moment. Sorry, Chair, is that on now? Yes. Yes, Who's I am, Chair. You? You're, you're speaking I'm, I'm, yes, Chair. Okay. Mr. Tewitt from Licensing is making representation as responsible authority. And I've got five people down to speak. I've got a Kevin Fleming. Apologies, I'm... You're the guy with the cat, yeah. I've got a gala car. Yeah. Um, Louise Brewood. 
Louise is unable to attend. She couldn't get on. Her link wouldn't work and she's got some tech problems. So I'm going to make representations on her behalf. I've spoken to her on the phone and she's told Andrew that. OK, Kevin, thank you very much. Well, uh, I lost my place. Um, Kevin Fleming, Louise Braywood, Gala Carr, Louise Morton, and G Carr. Louise Morton's over there. G Carr. Is that everyone who expects to speak? Oh, uh, Polly Richards. It's Polly Richards here. Right, right. So as I said, you have approximately 10 minutes each side. So please don't repeat things other people have said. If, if points been made once, try to make a new point. But I, we'll try and give you as much flexibility as we can as we realize some people are professional speakers, some aren't. So I'll try and be quite flexible. And if I don't call out everyone, just remind me. So it's over to the applicant to make their case first. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Um, this this application remains as applied for. Um, I would just like to clarify for the panel, Chair, that on sales are limited by a condition on the application to be from eleven in the morning till ten at night. However, having spoken to my clients before the meeting, um, they are prepared to close the bar. In other words, reduce the terminal hour to twenty one thirty and close to the public at um, ten o'clock. Uh, if, if you are to feel that were appropriate. Chair, this brewery has previously operated for six years at the Bethnal Green Working Men's Club. Um, had a good trading history there, operating professionally, no issues for the police or uh, residents or RAs. They decided it was time to upgrade their premise, their, their business and move to their own premises, hence the move to Unit 399. This is a working brewery, Chair. Um, craft brewery um, that you've seen uh, moved all over the country these days but one with an established history now the tap room is a relatively small area to the front of the brewery with a normal capacity of 30 people uh, plus a, a couple of staff but during the covid um, situation the pandemic it's being limited to 20 people it is intended for people to visit and enjoy a drink um, or buy some beer to take home and I have to, uh, to stress that this does represent a vital, vital source of income for this small business going forward, especially during the COVID pandemic. It's not a late night venue chair, never has been intended to be. Um, and as I've indicated, they are prepared to close at 10 rather than 10.30, which of course they've got to do for the time being in any case. Chair, the brewery does not fall in one of the borough's CIZs. Um, it, the hours are within the council's framework hours during the week and, and at weekends, of course. Uh, I will just say at this stage, re um, residents have made comments relating to planning concerns, but as you all know, they are separate regimes and planning and licensing should be treated separately. But I can tell you, it does have B1, B2 class shoes, which covers the primary use as a brewery. The use of the tap room uh, with its small capacity is strictly ancillary to the primary use of the unit as a working brewery and i understand from uh, speaking to our fellow planning consultants that that would be permitted uh, and indeed most breweries in the country have a similar arrangement there is of course no representation or infor informative from the planning service either in practice chair the brewery the, the tap room won't be open during the daytime uh, on weekdays when they're brewing because the, the brewing is done in, within the unit itself and with the washing out of vessels etc it wouldn't be suitable to have customers in there but they'd like the freedom to to have the hours during the weekdays and over the weekend to cater for special occasions and maybe the odd booking or two um, the early start of eight is requested to allow them to prepare orders for delivery to retail customers for off sales whether by their own transport or by couriers. Um, orders being taken obviously by phone, internet or in person. They do also supply pubs, shops, clubs, etc., uh, which comes under uh, the wholesale system rather than retail. Uh, Mr. Wilson has advised me that they're most likely to open for on sales in the tap room from about five till 10 Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, 12 till 10 Saturday, Bank Holiday Sunday and Monday, and 12 
uh, to nine o'clock to 2100 hours on the Sunday. There will be a, a consumption period at the end, but if um, the the hours we've suggested, bringing it forward half an hour to, to 9.30 for the last orders and to close at 10 were accepted, obviously that, that would come forward half an hour and may be seen by a, a, as a, a reasonable response from the residents. Now, my clients are trying to do all they can and have taken on board what residents have said very much so. During the application process, Chair, they've had five tens um, and they do have one pending. Residents have provided some oral evidence um, alleging noise from our clients' premises. Unfortunately, there's no photographic evidence, but that was on the during the first 10 on the uh, on the 12th of July that the noise occurred. My clients are very sorry for that. They had some friends over to for their opening weekend, their opening night. Didn't realise it had got a bit of noisy <clears throat> and may have disturbed the residents. They are genuinely sorry. And sincere, sincerely apologise to any of the residents they've disturbed. They were initially unaware of that until we received the representations and saw the the evidence, the, the um, noise new, uh, report from the residents. There have been they've had another four tens since three in August and one in September to date, uh, and we're not aware of any complaints being made to either the police or the noise team. Um, or indeed the licensing authority. Now I can tell members that my clients have undertaken some due diligence checks themselves using a noise app on evenings when those tens have taken place and they have submitted those in support of their uh, presentation tonight. Uh, these relate to 10 o'clock on the 11th of August when they had a 10 and I think there are there is one on the 28th of August and two on the 30th. This involved Mr. Wilson, one of the directors who's here tonight, going over the road, and I've seen the film footage of it on, on his phone, um, monitoring the noise. I've played those back chair, and quite honestly, all you can hear is a faint noise from over the road. There's no music, and it's just people talking. Um, we are aware of the possible concerns, having spoken to Mr. Chewitz, for example, about the, the shutter, and Mr. Foster, who is the other director, is himself a, a surveyor and works on this sort of thing. He will uh, address you briefly, if, if that's uh, permissible with yourself, to see what measures they're going to put into put acoustic padding in the, um, the bar area to, to dampen the noise down and what they can do to address the issues relating to the shutter. There's no request and no intent to play music at the premises and none of the recordings I've heard, whether it's the residence one or the, the ones from Mr Wilson, have uh, had any music playing so they're not out to, you know to disturb uh, the residents um they would be allowed of course to play music but they don't intend to uh, if they do it'll just be purely background music because louder music is not conducive to the atmosphere of a uh, of a small tap room as i say they they are aware of, of the concerns about the people noise but it was when i heard it at a low level comments have been made by residents about and, and mr chewitt asked me this morning about a glass shop front could be installed sadly that's not possible chair because the, if you look at the layout of the premises the, the shutter they have to receive materials in bulk uh, grain and other materials for the brewery and of course they also have to deliver kegs trying to get that through the small um, pedestrian door would would be rather difficult so i'll ask mr uh, Foster to address you shortly, if I may, so about the acoustic measures he proposes. It's going to have to be brief if you keep going on. Right, okay, I'll, I'll speed it up a bit. They have put in a noise management plan, um, which was you will have seen. It's been updated. We're happy to have that as a condition, uh, including that it's got to be reviewed and made available, included in staff training, etc., and the staff will have to work to it. We are happy to, there is a phone number provided, um, that's the condition on the operating schedule. We're happy to have that um, made available. They'll fly the local residents and we're happy to offer meetings with the local residents, perhaps on a six monthly basis. Any complaints received by, from residents would be recorded in the incident book, so there's a transparent record. And as I say, they want to build a relationship with local residents. Chair, I will just comment briefly, if I may. The photographs that were submitted by the residents of gentlemen urinating in the street, totally unacceptable. Those appeared in the Hackney Gazette, 3rd of July. The, my client's premises didn't even open until the 11th. 
So you can see that relates more to problems with the issues at the time on London Fields. There's no connection to uh, Three Sods Brewery, no evidence to counter that, no causal link. So I'm asking you to disregard that. There were, as mentioned, cigarette butts, for example. They do have a container outside. Conditions are offered to cleat the front, tidy and sweep up. No drinks were allowed outside. Um, we're happy to offer the maximum of four smokers, which is mentioned after 10 at the moment, but at any time. Dispersal policy has to be offered. That you'll see in the noise management plan at part D, point D on page 44 of the pack. Um, another photograph shows a larger group outside. The police have confirmed they were satisfied. Those were just passers by. They were not customers of the, the brewery, so they weren't excess of the brewery or tap room. They weren't excess people outside. Um, they have provided a full list of robust conditions that will promote, in my opinion, the, and I'm asking you to see that, the uh, licensing objectives, police representation withdrawal, noise, the waste conditions agreed. I have spoken to Mr. Chewitt last week and today, but he felt unable to withdraw his representation. But you'll be aware, Chair, there has to be a balance between residents' rights and the rights of this business to run successfully. There is no noise representation from the EHO. Um, as I say, my clients are sorry for, for the one night that there was some disturbance. Uh, I'll just mention briefing, briefly that the pricing is another measure they're going to use. Four fifty. Sorry, Chair. You're not doing anything briefly. You're doing most things at great length. <laughs> oh, right. Four fifty five pounds for a pint. Okay, then you need to finish soon. And, and, and really, I, I would just say, Chair, that the measures that the red, that we've proposed will, we believe, address the residents' concerns. Um, quite happy to expand on that further. And if you're prepared to listen to Mr. Foster briefly, he can tell you about the acoustic measures. Thank you, Chair. Foster, please. Hi, sorry, I'll just bring I, uh, Hi, Chair. Um, as uh, Graham has said, yeah, I'm a quantity surveyor. Um, we did have an engineer, a sound engineer into, in the arch, and he suggested that we put in acoustic panels. Um, we are going to put in uh, acoustic panels, which are basically just uh, frames of timber, 2.1 by 1.2, if wherever they can fit on a sort of open area made of RWA 45, a rock wall product, which is an acoustic insulation. Uh, the main um, anticipation is to stop the noise from bouncing around inside the arch. It's uh, the acoustics of the arch doesn't warrant itself um, to, to good sound, and hence the soft panels will um, absorb the sound and stop the, the echo uh, coming out onto the street. Um, that's pretty much all we can do in terms of the acoustics inside to, to manage or mitigate sound within the arch. What about keeping the doors and windows closed entirely during the evening? Is that feasible or not? Um, we do close the door, uh, I think at around nine o'clock in any case. Um, people can, people, we leave the side door sort of ajar so people can still come in. We do find that if we just leave it permanently closed, it just sort of appears closed to people um, and, and sort of no one um, comes in or inquires. But we do think that a sort of reasonable closing, even sort of close at half um, and then close it full at around nine. Uh, we think that that's sort of kind of a, a good compromise. In terms of this statement you sent around today or we received today, we're all going to take it that you're reducing license activities are 2130 and closing at 2200. Part of the revised application, at very maximum. We'd like the closing to be on the R if possible, so it's easily policed. You also seem to offer, if I'm correct, that be a minimum of two at all times, while on the previous inf information there was some doubt of a well not to be two when you were less busy, two members of staff that is. Is that not clear, two members of staff minimum at all state times? Uh, there will always be t a minimum of two. Uh, Graham, if you are happy to uh, confirm on that. But yes, there will always be a minimum of two staff. Yes, Chair, that's my understanding. Okay, Councillor Peters, any clarifications at this stage? Um, a couple of things, actually. Um, and um, 
Ms. North, I think we might need just some clarification on a point made by uh, Mr. Hopkins, which is the picture of the people urinating um, wasn't at the time when the uh, these premises were in operation. So Mr. Hopkins has said that we should disregard that picture. But um, I think that it was also largely being used as evidence of um, a, a general problem of cumulative impact in the area. So presumably we could take it into account for that purpose. Yes, I think you can, yes. Um, I, you know, um, uh, objectors are entitled to submit evidence that they feel is relevant to demonstrate uh, their concerns um, as to why the, um, they're objecting to the application. Okay. Um, a few other things, um, if that's okay, Chair. Um, so, Mr. Hopkins, you said that the applicant wants to build a relationship with uh, the residents, neighbouring residents, uh, and that they would be willing to meet with those neighbouring residents. Have they done so already? Not to date, Councillor, no. This is something that came out in discussions following talking to Mr. Chirrut last week. Um, they're proposing, as I say, to put a flyer through the residents' doors initially with the telephone number on and maybe submit that to the um, planning company that represented some of the residents. We've discussed that and then they would set up the first meeting. Um, obviously, whatever the, the resident, if the residents do have any cause for concern, that will be recorded in the incident book and the outcome of their, their um, inquiry into any complaints will be recorded in that as, as well. We've also offered a maximum of, uh, as you heard of, the now four smokers outside at any time, not just after 10 o'clock, and there's no drinks outside. So we're reach they're reaching out by the meeting, they're reaching out by uh, giving them the, passing the phone number around, so there's a there's an open engagement there. So, but w when were, was the applicant aware that the residents and neighbouring residents were unhappy with this application. The first we we found out was during, during the um, after the first ten when I got a an email from one of the residents um, through the I think the chair of the licensing committee had received it and passed it on, um, yeah. and that that's how we found out. Uh, so why why hasn't the applicant met with those residents to try to address some of their concerns before tonight? I mean, it would have been helpful for that to have happened. Well, certainly, Councillor, the, the copies of the representations I got, all the addresses, including the email addresses, were all redacted. Um, it would have been a little difficult to, to contact them directly. Although you know where they live. Uh, I think Mr Foster and Mr Digby want to go in. Yeah. Well, well Mr Digby, first. Yeah. Hi there, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, I just wanted to clarify that actually before our very first 10, we did put some small flyers through all the resident doors opposite, inviting them to come over and meet us so that we could introduce ourselves and we could explain to them what we're all about and and hear their concerns. And a number of them did. I think um, Gala did and Sam did from number 18. Um, we have had a few who came over ahead of our sort of, ahead of receiving them in email form. Okay, that, that's... That's helpful, actually. Um, uh, moving on to something else that is still a sort of clarification from what Mr. Hopkins said, um, uh, and this is about the videos um, um, that I think you, Mr. Digby, took with a um, decibel ometer, if that's the right word. Um, were those taken at a time? Um, they were taken during a ten and late at night. I understand it. But was there music being played inside the premises at the time? And how many people were inside the premises at the time? When I heard, sorry, if I have got to start, councillor. Um, no, there was no music being played. I've heard three of the, or more of the tapes that um, Mr. Digby did, and there's no music being played. And I understand the maximum capacity because of COVID was 20. There may have been about between 16 and 20. So if there was music being played inside and 
under statute, we have absolutely no powers uh, around regulated music and uh, regulated entertainment and playing music until 11 o'clock in the evening. Um, uh, the um, uh, noise leakage from those premises would be likely to be significantly more than what was shown in those videos. Yes, councillor, I, I understand what you're saying about the deregulation, but my clients feel that playing loud music, certainly from just as a business point of view, would not be conducive to the atmosphere they want in a in a small tap room. It's it's a tap room, and it's not intended to be a bar with loud music. So, I think they'll you'll find they'll be quite happy to give an undertaking not to play loud music. But in what I've heard, there was no music at all, none at all. So, Ms. North might be able to help on this, but I don't think that any undertaking along those lines would be enforceable, or, or am I wrong? Could, could they could just repeat that point again, please? So, the suggestion was that the applicant may give an undertaking not to play what is, I think, in statute referred to as regulated entertainment um, while uh, during the licensable hours that are being applied for. Um, however, given that this is an un, well, this is un, an unregulated area, um, we couldn't regulate through the back door, could we? No, I think we need to we need to actually condition it, and there needs to be proper agreement in place. But could we actually condition that? Um, but you think it's not well. It's Chair, Chair, Chair it would be, if 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 you're minded to grant a license, it, it would um, it would mean that recorded music in certain circumstances is uh, is is exempt from being re uh, regulated entertainment. So audience sized uh, hours of the day uh, and other types of regulated entertainment as well, uh, but not films and not boxing and wrestling. Okay, so if we license these premises, we wouldn't have any. Power actually to prevent music. There is power, but there's a, a process, a review application process, in which case those uh, conditions are reintroduced. Okay. So automatically, um, they uh, recorded music, for example, which is what we're talking about, really, uh, and live music, let's say, that those two activities would be exempt between 8 and 11 p.m. 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, first of all, Mr. Shramana, I jumped over you and Katya asked you to introduce the application. Apologies, I was getting flustered by my dropping out of the conversation. Do you need to add anything to us? No, Chair, there's nothing else to add. It's just the supporting documents has been circulated. So everything as such, and um, it's just the application received and the hours are stated in the agenda and the um, all the supporting doc documents which has been provided by the application has been circulated so only the the licensing and op ops remain so that's nothing much to be added on okay thank you very much mr chu it's over to you to make representations okay thank you chair i'll i'll keep it very brief as well so uh, my representation <coughs> is at appendix b uh, which on the printed agenda is on page 69 um so the representation is pretty much still as it stands. Uh, it was the on-sale activity, which I feel would have a negative impact. Um, looking at the agenda, I know that some of the residents are also concerned about off-sales, uh, but I, I think the, uh, personally, I think the mail, mail order delivery off-sales provision is, uh, uh, from a tap room is, um, is, not, is not a problem or a bottle shop. Uh, it's, it's just the the, the on sales, um, which I think if that activity uh, is authorised, uh, could have a negative impact on the uh, public prevention of public nuisance objective. Um, just looking at that part of Mentmore Terrace, there there isn't a lot of commercial activity at that end of the the street. There is some uh, commercial activity at the other end, uh, or, or in this this sort of part of. Midmore Terrace, there is, uh, I think there's a dark kitchen, a Wagamama, there's a, a couple of cafes uh, and a, a, Thai rest, a Thai restaurant a bit further along. But um, at night time, it is quite, the ambient noise levels, are, I, I feel, are quite low. So I, I think um, it would be quite noticeable for, 
for the residents in that area if um, if on sales and uh, there was some activity that was taking place along here. So um, so that's pretty much what I've uh, said in the representation and I, uh, and I'll, I'll just leave it there for now and allow the residents to, to have their say. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. So if everyone could try and keep to maybe two or three minutes in your present, if your presentations. Kevin, do you want to go first? Thank you very much, Chair. If I could crave your indulgence, because I'm speaking on behalf of the London Fields User Group, and I'm covering Louise Braywood's comments as well on behalf of local residents. So if I could have a little bit of latitude, I'd appreciate that. I'll do my best to be quick. I take David's points around the takeaway sales, but from the park user's point of view, as councillors will be aware, the park has had significant problems over the summer with very high levels of alcohol consumption in the park. And we are concerned that additional takeaway premises supplying in the vicinity will have an impact on the park. Now, we have in our submission, which is in the pack in the appendix, our proposal is we don't we have no desire whatsoever to see an infringement of the deliveries and the home takeaways and things like that. But we're concerned we don't see a rationale for um, the, the park toilets close uh, at dusk. And so there's no public toilet facilities in the park available. So we have concerns about people leaving. It's a small capacity at tap room, people leaving, taking a four pack out, sitting in the park. And then as they have nowhere to urinate, urinating in the woodland area, urinating in the vicinity, out of sight of the, um, the, the tap room, which is partly why our, our request is that if you do license this, then you have a restriction on that in terms of um, evening sales, because the evening sales and the walk away takeout four cans in your hand sales into the park are the ones that contribute to antisocial behavior in the park and they're the ones that contribute to public urination in the park and public defecation in the park um, that doesn't impinge on any of the home deliveries or any of the people turning up in the day so it's a very limited requirement especially related to sales in the summer to reduce the impact now the applicants have made a great story about how much they've engaged i'm sorry to say that um, the london fields user groups had absolutely zero contact from the applicants, zero contact from Mr. Hopkins. So I do take the idea that they've tried to engage with people that everyone in Hackney has been aware of the disastrous impact of takeaway alcohol consumption in parks over the summer. And the, the fact that the applicants haven't engaged with us at all on that doesn't speak to me about applicants that are especially interested in engaging, not just with local residents, but with park users. We're, we're very concerned about that. Um, so that's the, the the biggest initial concern for us as park users has been the um, takeaway alcohol sales and consumption in the park, and that's something that we'd like to see addressed. Um, Louise's point of view and the local residents' point of view speaks to things like noise and things like public urination and gathering. And I have to say again, at the moment, looking at the application and the confusion in the application, it seems to be full of contradictions so part of the application says that for example all doors and windows will be kept kept closed except for the entry and egress of customers during the place of playing of musical entertainment and point eight of the application now we're told that it's going to remain open until nine o'clock so effectively um they're saying uh, in the latest one they're saying that um provision of music the provision of background music shall be permitted at time the premise is open to the public so effectively the application allows for taped music recorded music to be played from 8 a.m till 10 p.m or 9 30 if they change the hours so for tape music to be played all days with the shutters open now the applicants have provided um some footage and as uh, councillor peters has highlighted there's no, there's no music playing at that time and the shutter was down so the evidence that the music um the requirement is and that the no music from the premises shall be audible at the nearest noise sensitive premises. So the nearest noise sensitive premises would be across the road and the applicants provided no evidence that the shutters open with music playing, which is what they intend to do, won't cause noise nuisance. They have told us that they will have, um, they can't put glazing in. So a statement saying that doors and windows will be kept closed except for entry and egress is meaningless because they can't close it. They've already made it clear that they can't and won't close it. Um, we um we're concerned that the the other additional bits that um we're concerned about we've always been concerned and we're pleased to see the additional number of staff being increased um i'm confused and hopefully david can clarify this because there's no um 
in terms of the regulated entertainment, the applicants haven't completed anything in Section F to do with recorded music, so there's no application to allow for the playing of recorded music. Um, and the other bit that uh, Mr. Stewart did highlight was the extent that there's not much um, going on at that end of um, Mentor Terrace at the moment. However, we'll see Mr. Hopkins again in a few weeks when he's going to present the same set of arguments in terms of Plonk, who are also seeking an application to increase their outdoor seeking, seating and drinking capacity, who he will also be representing. So this is part of a process of increasing the amount of alcohol consumption on Mentmore Terrace. So while each individual place might only have a small amount of noise nuisance and a small amount of smokers outside and a small amount of music, the cumulative impact from each one has a deleterious effect on local residents. So from a park user's point of view, we're concerned about the takeouts, we're concerned about the impact when the toilets are closed in the park. The local residents are concerned that there will be noise nuisance. They aren't going to put glazing in. They can't put glazing in. They will leave the shutters open. The application states that they're going to have music at all times it's open to the public. So we want to see some very, if, if, if the license is granted, we'd like to see some very, very firm commitments. There's no statements about noise monitoring equipment being installed. There's no statements about the hours that music can be played. And these things really need to be tightened up. It was an interesting discussion with the earlier one about the off license before, because historically some of the some of the license have been overly lax. Some of the licenses granted haven't had these conditions. And going forward, they need to have these conditions because at the moment it's an ancillary provision as part of a tap room. But once the license is granted, that doesn't mean that at some point there can't be any um, variations applied for increased capacity. And that's what we, as local residents and local park users, we're very concerned about. That's our primary concerns at this stage. Okay, thank you very much. Gala, do you want to go next? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Claire. Good evening. Um, I've lived on um, Mentmore Terrace for um, 18 years, and um, it is a quiet residential street in the evenings. Um, with no late night activity actually of any kind where I am. Um, I strongly object to this application on the following grounds really. There's a real significant increase in noise which I've witnessed and have recorded and submitted during the temporary events over the summer which negatively impacted on our amenity. I mean I'm, I'm literally opposite it. So the proximity to the proposed licensed premises to our living room which is at the front of our house, as it is with all the other properties on Mentmore Terrace, really impacts on our amenity with increased noise and disturbance. I mean, I can just hear it with the shutter open. I just hear noise, noise, noise um, throughout the day and into the night. So, and furthermore, my child's bedroom is at the front overlooking the property on Mentmore Terrace, which is also the same for many of my neighbours on the street. So an operational bar running from whether it's 8 a.m. in the morning till 10 p.m. at night, e even with their changed hours, it is wholly inappropriate, really, on, on this residential street where there are many children. My neighbor on Mentmore Terrace is a childminder, and she's extremely concerned about the harm that this will cause to young children. So I, re I really implore you to um, reject this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Louise? Thank you. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, good evening, members. So, Quadrant Town Planning acts on behalf of some 45 local residents who live within the immediate vicinity of the three Sods Brewery premises. We object to the proposed premises license it fails to meet the licensing objectives. To highlight the level of concern from local residents, every single residential property opposite the Three Sods Brewery, that's numbers 8 to 22 Mentmore Terrace, has objected. These houses containing families are directly opposite the premises. Other residents who have objected all live within 100 metres of the premises on London Lane, Grandstone Avenue and Ellingfort Road. By way of background, we highlight the characteristics of the locality. Mentmore Terrace is a residential street comprising terraced houses which do not have front gardens. They sit at the back of pavement. The railway arches run parallel to the street and are located some 14 metres from residents' front doors. 
The arches and metal terrace are used for a variety of purposes like a gym, bakery, prep kitchen, etc. With the comings and goings from London Field Station, the street is a continuous trickle of activity throughout the day. Come the evening, however, the workshops close, the commuters go home, and the street is very quiet. At Arch 399 is the sale and consumption of alcohol. The selling of alcohol for 14 hours a day, seven days a week, is directly with the residential character of Mentmore Terrace. In my view, the applicants have failed to acknowledge the residential characteristics of the location, with houses a stone's throw from the beer pumps. In our view, the proposal conflicts with LP1 in this respect. Just turning to the licensing objectives and the conflicts there, prevention of crime and disorder. By selling beer for consumption both on and off the premises, the application, the, the application is encouraging alcohol within the community in a location which is already suffering from high alcohol consumption on the streets and within the park, as referred to by Kevin. The park is a magnet for people who want to drink outside and another bar on the edge will only serve to encourage this. The park's surrounded by licensed premises. Clusterings at Broadway Market and on Mare Street create one long pub crawl with the park in between, and another bar will intensify this. Mentmore Terrace is subject to public urination from people who cannot hold their drink, and I know the residents will speak on this. Um, our view is that the bar would simply exacerbate that. The premises only have one toilet, which we think is inadequate. The toilets in the park close, as we know, at 7.30 p.m., meaning for any takeout sales after that, if customers are going to the park, there's nowhere for them to go to the toilet except in the street, which is what they do right outside the residents' homes. To prevention, um, prevention of public nuisance. The bar would lead to an increase in noise, disturbance and littering. It's got a very small interior with no windows, meaning that its operation will rely at times on opening the roller shutter door at the front of the premises to allow customers to spill out onto the pavement. This spill out on Mentmore Terrace will cause a direct public nuisance to the residents. The narrowness of the street means that customers drinking on the pavement are literally metres from residents' front doors. As stated, there are no gardens or fences or barriers in between. Even with the shutter down, noise levels are unacceptable, as witnessed by the TENS events in the summer. Um, I note the acoustic measures proposed um, in terms of padding on the shutter, um, that may assist, but what about in the summer months, April, May, June, July? August, September, potentially six months of the year with warmer weather, I imagine the shutter will be open. The applicants refer to the fact that the door will remain ajar, uh, allowing noise to escape. Uh, moving to protection of children from harm, as heard from Gala, we have children's bedrooms um, at the front of the properties which directly overlook the street. And a bar with shutters wide open, people spilling out onto the street will harm children's sleep patterns. There's currently no late night activity on Mentmore Terrace, and as you've heard, the evenings are very quiet. In our view, it's not appropriate to operate a bar so close to children's homes, exposing them to alcohol consumption and antisocial behaviour. Just touching on planning status, I accept their different regimes. Please. Sorry? And ask you to draw to a conclusion, please. Um, yes, I just wanted to say that they are separate regimes, but in our view, looking at the plan that's been submitted, um, it doesn't seem that the bar area is ancillary. The tables and the room for standing up, in my view, takes up about two thirds of the space of the premises. It does look like the tap room, the, the um, actual brewing function is, um, is more the ancillary part of the scheme. I'd uh, just like to touch on one point with regards to the letters of support that were submitted by the applicants. Um, they do all appear to have been, um, they're all pro formas and they were 
put together, it looks like, on one of the TENS event events, and I'd ask you to disregard them. I think that's all I want to say at this moment, but thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Polly. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I am a resident of 25 years. I live at the north end of Mentmore Terrace. So one of the residents that live perhaps the furthest away um, from the brewery. Um, I'm also uh, at the corner that seems to suffer quite a lot uh, from urination. And I was the photographer of the picture that's at the end of Lu Louise's report. Uh, I should say this was not a one-off event. Um, this has been something that we've suffered from throughout the summer. And I think my biggest concern, uh, as people have said before me, is that if permission is given to this license, uh, this will just exacerbate the problem that we already have um, of, of urination in our street. People drop back from the venues that they are at, whether that's London Fields or uh, breweries where they drink, they, they drop away from there uh, to then urinate. And this isn't just a nighttime activity, it's a daytime activity. So I'm actually objecting uh, to the idea of on sales uh, during the day as well. It's not just at night when it's gonna be a problem. We saw this throughout the summer uh, and as soon as the pub opened, we saw it with people with their takeaways. So um, this is just gonna add to the problem. And I am also extremely concerned by sound um, because we have this weird effect of, uh, and it's to do with our proximity to the wall where any sound bounces off the, uh, the line of the railway. Uh, and I think that's just to do with how far we're, we're away we are from the wall and the fact that it's a hard surface. So that's noise at ground level then bounces up into our bedroom windows. Uh, and I think my biggest concern is that if you give um, permission for this premise, then what's to stop you giving permission for more um, license, uh, off licenses and license premises throughout Mentmore Terrace? We don't want a situation as residences um, where uh, suddenly we're in a street like um, Bohemia Place, which is full of breweries. I'm sure um, people enjoying London Fields would think that was pleasant, but this is a quiet residential street and it always has been. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't missed anyone else out, have I, who's expecting to speak? I can see a couple of people on the call who aren't down to speak. Mr. Park, you weren't suggesting you were down to speak. I don't think you were. Mr. Park, you weren't down to speak as far as I'm aware. No. Okay, um start investigating a few of the issues. The problem with some of these is they appear to be unresolvable. This is to the applicant. I think the last points made about the building, how small it is, how contained the space is, and how little room you have to do some of the adaptations you might have to do are valid. It seems to be difficult that you could make this work. Um the point about the toilet, it's certainly valid. You've got only one in there, is that correct? And it would be difficult to provide a second one without taking away space from your commercial activity, surely. Do either, either three of you answer? Yeah, we, we do have just the one toilet, that's true, yeah. Um, I mean, what I say is we, we've had a number of people asked to use our toilet over the last few months um, while we were building it. So you know we we do appreciate the uh, the problem with the public urination, um, but we're happy to have anyone who needs a wee come in and have a wee. Um, also, I don't know. I honestly I don't know of anyone who is drinking in a pub or brewery who decides it's time to go and needs the toilet and thinks that rather than have a wee before leaving, they will leave and have a wee on a building down the road. Um, that's simply that hasn't happened uh, with any of our with any of our patrons so far. Um, I don't think people do that. Um, but yes, no, we are more than happy to let anyone use the toilet if they need to. Well, it's not clear you could add any more if you needed to at all. To mm. in your situation? I don't think that would be possible. Um, maybe, I mean, Adam's obviously the, uh, uh, the surveyor, but I think even he wouldn't be able to work his magic to squeeze another toilet in. But we could, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it 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 may be possible to add a, a urinal, but just mm, not. Uh, maybe. Yeah, you just put a urinal in the front of the of the block and put a door in, and you have a urinal in the toilet. So yeah, mm -hmm. that is a possibility. I think we've lost Mr. Yeah, Brian might have frozen. Yeah. So oh, we'll, I'm sure we'll be back very shortly. So can you please bear with us? Apologies. Um, yeah, we'll just need to wait for uh, the meeting. Hold, and um, so we don't, if we could just hold the meeting for a few minutes, please. Thank you. Hello again. Apologies again. Um, sorry, I don't know what's happening, but it's not something I can do much about it at the moment. Um, I was about to move on to the, ta the issue of sales during the day. Some residents were clearly concerned about the fact that sales were happening earlier in the day and they perhaps needed to. Can you restate for me why you think you need sales from eight o'clock in the morning? Councillor, if I, if I may answer that, Chair, <clears throat> we've requested the eight o'clock start. It's uh, uh, and as you'll see on the condition on the light, the, the application uh, on sales will not start till eleven o'clock in the morning. So there will be no on sales in the early morning. It's to facilitate the, the appropriation to the contract for alcohol for delivery primarily by courier. That's the reason we've asked for the earlier start. It's so not delivering, we're delivering a lot of alcohol between eight and eleven in the morning. It's it's not unusual, Chair. This is the third brewery we've done this year, and they all get the couriers come in between sort of eight, nine, ten. It's 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 out of their hands. It's when the courier firms come and pick it up, but they have to get the the, the order ready, obviously, if it comes in overnight. So it's not for on sales. On sales, these will be boxes going out to customers, not individual bottles. Um, they're not anticipating having the public in the premises at eight o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> it's to enable them to get pre-ordered orders ready your cat's very entertaining kevin like it a lot um seriously are you really expecting customers from 11 through lunch times on a regular basis no no as, as i've explained it, was to, it they want the hours to give them the freedom if somebody makes a booking which could happen a brewery a small brewery sir or whatever a small party um as happens in other microbreweries that they could have a drink afterwards it's it's just to give them the flexibility i, I did read out the hours they're talking about opening which mr will uh, mr digby can confirm it's primarily going to be evening time during the week sort of possibly wednesday but thursday friday from five o'clock onwards um and on saturdays from 12 and ditto on sunday from 12. most of your business is from 5 p.m during the week after 5 p.m that's that's for my comment with Mr. Digby, but perhaps I can ask him to answer that, Chair. Well, yeah, Chair. Um, we we are mainly a brewery during the week, so when we're brewing, I mean, we can't get we can't get everything finished and tidied up really in time by uh, four o'clock five. I mean, it, it's been a push for us to get ready for five o'clock on the few Fridays that we have been open. So we're not going to be opening Mondays. We're not going to be opening Tuesdays. We're I can't imagine we will be opening Wednesdays. We'll be opening Friday evenings from five and saturdays from 12 till 10. 
we've tried a couple of Sundays and they were they were fairly quiet. So actually, we've stopped opening on Sundays. We've only done a, a couple of those. Thursday evening, maybe, but again, it depends on how busy we are brewing during the week. We just, as Graham said, we'd like the the sort of flexibility to be able to open on the occasional weekday evening if we could. But I, it's not going to be it's not going to be every day, and it's certainly not going to be um, sort of from eleven every day or anything. I understand you want flexibility, but your neighbours also want some certainty. They won't be bothered any more than they have to be. Okay. I mean, we, well, we could we could say we absolutely categorically will not open the bar on a on a on a Monday evening, on a Tuesday evening, even on a Wednesday evening. We could we could just we could set in we could agree with the residents. These are the times. These are the hours. Every week that we would we would open. That would be very helpful if we were minded to grant, of course. Councillor Peters, do you want to raise any well, issues? Yeah, so on that, can can we separate out on sales and off sales and allow different times for each? Absolutely. Uh, I think there's a question for Ms. North, is it? Amanda? We do we do set out generally on, on the license separate hours for each, but ideally they'd probably be running concurrently together. So that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. In, in this case, where there is a particular problem highlighted about on sales, and we'll we'll, we'll turn, go on to off sales in a, in a moment, um, we could restrict on sales just to certain days of the week and certain hours yes. of the day, right? Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, so, Chair, I think it might be helpful for Mr. Hopkins to suggest if we were going to do that. Uh, uh, and maybe with Mr. Uh, well, with his clients, um, what hours those would be? Yes, Chair, happy to do that. I think Mr. Digby has given you an indication that they'd be looking for um, not weekday evenings, but certainly possibly Thursday, Friday, Saturday would be the main times. Is that right, Wilson? Yes, that's right, Graham. Yeah, and maybe. Maybe Sundays, maybe not. We'd like a day off during the week as well. Can we, should we, if we, Chair, if we, through you, propose hours, I think they'd be looking at. Mr. Digby has indicated uh, 1700 to 2130, I think, on Friday, sorry, Thursday and Friday, 12 to 2130 on a Saturday, and I think we've said 12 to 2100 on a Sunday. If I can just ask Mr. Digby to confirm. It would be as set out in the application at the moment, right? No, sorry, no. Uh, it would be up until 21. Uh, well, actually, you need to clarify that, sorry. Uh, yes, councillor. It would we we need the early mornings to prepare the orders for the for the couriers primarily, but obviously they do do deliveries uh, in London in their own transport as well. Uh, so we'd like to keep the flexibility for the the off sales. So that would be um, eight until twenty one thirty for off sales. Okay, well I think that's something we'll need to consider and maybe hear the residents' views on as well. Yeah, I wonder if there's anything else you wanted to raise, and I could come back together. Um, so I, th I think I'd say as a sort of overarching comment, one of the first applications that I sat on as a councillor was a um, uh, an application for um, to license um, an archway, and this was in Haggerston, um, and I was told that there was a lot of um, uh, well, the, the the licensing subcommittee at the time was told that there was a lot of insulation that went in at the front uh, to prevent noise from leaking out. And this was in an instance uh, where uh, circumstances in which a new residential building was being built very close uh, to uh, that um, those premises, um, probably as close as we're, we're talking here. Um, and um, uh, we did grant the license and then I was just made some weeks later to pass by and hear that there was a lot of noise leakage uh, coming out. So I think that there is a real, I have a real concern here about noise leakage from these premises, especially because what we're talking about here is 
a just a metal grill um, or metal um, shutters going out down across the um, the, the large part of that opening. Um, uh, I think we do need to really consider this point about the effect on London fields and takeaways on London fields. Um, Councillor Bell, you and I um, uh, had spent um, a lot of time in the council um, with our fellow councillors um, uh, hashing through uh, what was to be done about the um, uh, uh, the very, very serious problems of antisocial behaviour on London fields across the summer. So that's something that's bearing heavily in my mind. Um, so the, there are those two issues, but of particular concern is the is the noise issue, given what we've heard about the proximity to the to to, to the homes opposite. And you know, I don't live far away, and I I, I know that part of the world relatively well. Um, I do one question is so E five Bakehouse is just or well, Millhouse or whatever it is yeah Bakehouse is just down the down the road there is that um, does that have a glass front on there and are the doors left open there as as well um, I'm just trying to understand I, I whether there are whether there are similar problems with well, well whether uh, there are similar problems with the daytime use of that premises. Okay. Council, Council, I could speak on that, but because I obviously live um, very close to there, but no, they have they have a um, they have a glazing and a door built-in door, so they don't have any shutters open, so they actually close that. It's fully closed, glazed with a door, so we don't okay. hear, we don't hear anymore. And also, they're only open in the day, and uh, yeah, it's closed. There's a problem here in that we can condition noise coming out and it shouldn't come out but it's difficult to condition exactly how they structurally achieve that mm. there may be a reason to think about refusing rather than conditioning i'm afraid amanda you're going to say something yeah i'm sorry i just wanted to go back to the off sales hours are they looking at monday to friday monday to saturday or um because it's at the moment it's got monday to sunday for the um on and off sales so i just wondered if i could a clarification on that and um you know for, for, for the decision making and also um whether or not any um measures are going to be taken to um to ensure that you know re um would members be asking for any uh, measures to be put in place to um prevent the issues arising outside um other than just providing another toilet so will they be doing any other sort of will there be anyone else monitoring outside or taking any actions there are proposed conditions requiring their staff to do something about monitoring the outside areas the practical question with the maximum of two members of staff can you do very much even if it's even the best intentions that's the problem here the premise is quite small the business is quite small what they can achieve and what they promise to achieve may not necessarily match up in my view anyway it's a real problem here i take it that they may be of you know good intentions but their operation is so small that they think they can and cannot do mr foster um yeah that was sort of my pivotal point as uh not well yeah um uh, even when it is open realistically there's only like I know we said, oh, there's 20 people, but really it's only about eight or 10, or maybe two or three tables at any one time. Um, only when we first opened was every table sort of full from what I can remember. Um, so, I mean, it's, yeah, from that aspect, it is it's is quite easy to manage uh, on, a, on a personnel basis. Uh, the only, uh, the only one, one thing I wanted to sort of propose That's maybe- people who are inside the premises, isn't it? Sorry? That's managing people who are inside the premises, in principally means. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, look, we're really talking about, I don't know, about a, maybe a 20 square meter area. Um, it's easy to walk outside and monitor it. I mean, we do anyway. I mean, we do often go outside and, 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 and have a look. I mean, there's a lot going on during the day and the evening. So we're sort of, you know, just having an opportunity because a lot of people walking past and some maybe unsavory characters so you're always sort of on high alert 
uh, on it in any case. Um, from a from a noise aspect, I was just thinking, would it be a possibility to almost put like a an acoustic concertina across the front, um, sort of that's not that doesn't really block off the entire shut area completely, but sort of is almost like a dressing screen, if that if that makes sense. Um, that's the only, that's the only sort of what might work is an acoustic lobby where you have two doors. So it would eat into your premise a little bit. But one door would have to close before the other one was open, and we'd cut down the amount of noise leaking out. Going in and out. Yeah. Yeah. That's something you might be prepared to try to achieve. Yeah, I mean, uh, we are wholeheartedly aware that we need to do something. Uh, we weren't really, I mean, obviously, this was a, a critical moment in the development of the business. I mean, we sort of were holding off on, on, on spending more money than, than necessary. But if it's a requirement, then obviously that's obviously something we have to do. Well, it's just trying to find a way to try to address the concerns of the neighbours to try and stop noise leaking out. Yeah. We want you to be successful, but on the other hand, we want other people to have a quality of life protected. Yeah. And try to think of ways to get the balance right. Um, I think it's right now if I was to ask the other the other objectors, the other person to comment. Um, so in the same order as before, Kevin, do you want to say anything? Just to clarify, these aren't closing remarks. Yeah, my, I mean, I, I take, I very much support, um, from Louise's point of view, very much support and endorse the comments. I have to take issue with um, Mr. Digby's point that people don't come out of um, real ale breweries and then piss in the street. We see it constantly and we see it consistently. So I, um, it doesn't matter. We've got people, but it doesn't really matter whether they're drinking champagne, whether they're drinking Prosecco, whether they're drinking Tenant Super. It all gets turned into water and it all gets pissed on someone's doorstep. I'm very sorry if you feel that your clients are somehow a cut above everyone else, but they're still pissing on people's doorsteps. And that's the nature, whether they're coming out of London Fields Brewery, whether they're coming out of um, the pub and the park, they're still pissing on doorsteps. And part of the nature of that is disinhibited people and alcohol disinhibits, disinhibited people who are full of alcohol won't wait for a toilet. They're leaving, they're going on somewhere else. And if there's a queue, they'll go, come on, mate, let's go. And they go and piss somewhere on someone's doorstep. And we've seen it all summer. So firstly, as local residents, you have to hear that your, your service users, your customers aren't somehow equipped with extra super capacity bladders and they don't piss on people's doorsteps, they do. The part that hasn't been addressed, and I really, really find it frustrating that it hasn't been addressed, as, a, as an aside, and I know we shouldn't do the generalization from the specific, but as an example, um, London Fields Brewery up the road, similar sort of setup. So one of the things that they promoted this summer was keg on wheels. So it was a 30 litre keg on a cart, which people could hire for 20 quid for the day, wheel out into London Fields, and on social media they were publicizing that um, hire this for the day, and you could have uh, 30 pints and drink all day in the park. So there's a very, very active campaigning to encourage the use of the park for the drinking. Uh, it effectively means that you can sell a lot more alcohol because you've got the freebie of a council funded park, which the council pays to clear up afterwards. Wait, Kevin, sorry, I'm, I'm going to stop you. Okay, so my, my point is that there needs to be very strict management of, there's not a rationale for having off sales from seven till 9.30, there's not a rationale for it, there's no need for it. The only reason that's really happening is for people to then leave with four cans and go on to a party with it. If people are leaving and going home with it, no objection. But if people are leaving and going to the park and sitting in the park, that is a problem. So that's why the issue of off sales and the curtailment of off sales, in the, especially in the evening, is something that the London Fields user group is very, very, very keen to see addressed. And we're not seeing it addressed here at all. Okay, good more. Thank you. Good more common anything you've heard discussed? Gala, Carr, would you like to come in on anything? Hello, yes. Um, Hello. Just really, just, just, just really to, um, I, I fully support uh, all of Louise's um, comments and my concerns really remain the same, which are the, 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 the increased noise on our immunity living directly opposite However, they're talking about these possible provisions, you know, the shutter, it's a metal shutter, you know, sound does leak out, 
whatever they do, whether there's only seven people or whether there's 25 people, we'll still hear it, we'll still hear it right in our living rooms. And my daughter's um, bedroom overlooks it. And, you know, she, 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 it's affecting her, her sleep as well. So, you know, for me, I really feel that those are conditions that need to be addressed. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Just briefly, um, I think the applicants themselves have highlighted the tightness of the space. Um, the unit simply isn't big enough to accommodate all the needs in terms of additional toilets, uh, the appropriate sound insulation, uh, lobby, for example, to prevent noise um, uh, breakout. Um, you know, the unit may be big enough for a small craft brewery. We would support a small craft brewery, but with all the additional um, you know, customers up to 30 or more or small parties they're talking about with a brewery tour. Um, I just don't think the unit can accommodate it. Uh, just briefly on the hours that you've talked about for on and off sales. Um, yes, yeah, some restriction whilst, you know, it may be closed on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday may help. But fundamentally, um, I, I don't believe that that would override uh, or, or, or overcome the concerns about noise on the other days of the week and the other restricted hours that you have mentioned. Um, so um, I've heard what everyone said and that's really appreciated to have the debate, but I just don't feel that the applicants come back with enough to um, allay the residents' concerns. Thank you. Thank you, and Polly. Hi, um, not a huge amount to add, but just the, um, the on-sale hours now that they've been set out really concern me. Uh, the periods that have been requested, particularly uh, on the weekends, 12 till 21 hours on both Saturdays and Sundays, those are uh, particularly during um, summer months. Those are exactly the times when we had the problem of urination on the road. Um, so uh, this would definitely concern me. And uh, the fact there are only two members of staff uh, who will not be able to walk to the north end of Mentmore Terrace uh, and really not enough security staff on London Fields who are able to drop back to the north end of Mentmore Terrace and see the situation going on just means everyone's backs will be, be turned and this is just going to exacerbate the problem. Thank you. Okay, um, would any of the applicants like to come back on those? Mr Hopkins first. Yes, Chair. Thank you, Chair. You've, uh, Mr Digby and his colleagues have agreed uh, revised hours for on-sales, Chair. Um, Off-sales, as, as I've said, are, are primarily for delivery via courier, etc. We're not envisaging lots of people buying four cans. It's for people to order and basically have them delivered to come in a sample of the beers or just enjoy a quiet drink with friends. That, that's all it's all about. Mr. Foster's mentioned additional measures that you've asked him about that he will look into um, and is prepared to undertake to, if the license is granted, is prepared to undertake to reduce noise escape we, we're aware of the shutter obviously um being the nature of the beast but they can't put they can't take the shutter out because they have to have the goods delivered in and i suspect some of them are on pallets um so they have to be t taken in um i, I you, you know we have a, a, a operator here chair who's uh, got a good track record there was the one incident where the residents produced the tape we've apologized for that quite sincerely um they are sensible people. They are they are prepared to reach out to the residents and, and have the meetings, give the phone number so people can phone up if they've got a concern. Uh, it's a small venue, vital to the success of the business. And the, the comments about other premises, I would ask you to bear in mind, this has to be considered on its own merits, as you, you, you will know, Chair. And I'd ask you to grant the license with, with the amendments. Thank you very much. Foster, do you want to add anything? Um, just if I may, I, um, I, I know there's been a lot of reference to the last summer. Um, is that possibly because all the facilities were closed because of um, the, the, the pandemic? I'm not sure. But it was raised as a concern to us previously that there were a few uh, facilities that were closed because um, people they physically closed the park facilities. Is that correct? I'm not sure, but so I just wanted to make I just wanted to make a distinction. Uh, I don't know if the situation is it always the case 
um, or was it just this last summer because of COVID? I think there's a wider issue about the nature of the area and the fact that it is changing and certainly that whole corridor has developed. So I think there's an ongoing problem in London Fields and it's not just a one-off though it may have been exacerbated. Mr Digby, do you want to add anything? Not, not really. Other than just well, to say that, yeah, we we are we have been, you know, reasonable and polite and considerate throughout, and will continue to be so, and do everything we can to to mitigate any concerns. Um, we're not a we're not a weather spoons. We're not going to be open serving people from nine a.m. And, and we're not a light late night um, loud music place and open until the early hours. You know, we are, we will be shutting at. The last order is 9.30. If it has to be earlier on the weekend, sure, we understand that people want to have children and want to go to sleep. You know, we'll, we'll, we can we can be more flexible on, on the hours if we can come to a working time which works for everyone. But it's not going to be 24-7, seven days a week. So, Chair, can I, can I just reflect that back to, and something that Mr. Flaman said, back to maybe Mr. Hopkins about um, takeaway hours. And there's a point made about um, the the point of take of having an off license is in order to be able to allow uh, alcohol to be or your, um, the, the the beer brewed on the premises to be delivered. Um, then does that need to um, be done in the evening when say, the park toilets will be closed? Um, and then I, I guess the other thing it would be helpful to understand, and this, this builds on something that Mr. Foster said, um, um, the capacity of 30, certainly in premises with very little sound insulation, if any at all really, um, it seems a lot. Um, and if you only have eight to 10 people in, is 10 the appropriate capacity? Do we have a capacity figure? I'm not entirely sure we did have one. We, I did mention one, Chair. I did suggest that it would be 30 during normal times, but nowhere near that, obviously, because of the COVID, it has to be 20 maximum. And you've heard from, I think, Mr Digby and Mr Foster, it's mainly between 8 and 10, something like that. Um, it has to fit in with current the, report as a condition. Uh, not currently reported as a condition. Um, no, we weren't offering a condition. I think it's the, the 30 is the maximum figure that's specified on their fire risk assessment. But perhaps that Mr. Digby or Mr. Foster would like to say something about that. Um, well, I would say, I mean, 30 would be an absolute maximum. Um, I mean, we've got what five tables. Um, I, th I think if you count all the chairs, it maybe comes to just over. Just about twenty, actually. I think. I think when we thought thirty, we were thinking before the whole lockdown. We thought maybe we could have a few bar stools at the bar, maybe a few people standing. Obviously, it's that's all gone completely different now. Um, but if you saw the place, I mean, it is it is really small. Well, seeing photographs give us a fairly good idea of the inside and the layout. Okay. So, Adam, would you have been here throughout and not contributed anything? Do you want to add anything? It's okay, they know. Um, Chair, I don't know if, if Mr. Digby would be happy to, to perhaps agree 20, um, but uh, it's not going to change. The Prime Minister's already indicated in the next six months COVID's here and, you know, the, the, it's it's a problem. Yeah. We, we sorry, yeah, we, I mean, we could we could set a set a cap at 20 max if, if that would if that would help. It certainly would help. Um, and of course, you could come back to a variation at any time if you wish to. Just to make sure it is addressed from personally, I don't have a problem at all with the off sales. I don't think this venue and the kind of beer they brew, and no doubt it's not the cheapest end of the market, is the thing that people are getting drunk on Hunter Fields. I think it's more likely the supermarkets out on um, the street that people are buying their beers for drinking Hunter Fields at, personally. As someone who does the litter pick on London Fields, we get a fair amount of uh, five star brewery and um, all the hopster beers as well. I do the picking up with the other litter pickers. It's a fallacy to say that there's a different sort of rubbish being created. It still ends up getting chucked in the park. I'm sorry, councillor, but that, uh, that's that's the reality of what we clear up in the park. It's not 
just um, cheap cans. So the price of the beer, I, we picked up whole bottles of vodka, we picked up bottles of champagne, and we pick up craft beers as well. That was the very reason I said it, so you, you get a chance to argue against me if you wish. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Chair. Um, Mr. Stewart, do you have anything you want to bring in? Um, no, nothing to add, Chair, really. Uh, I think uh, most of it's already been said by the local residents. And uh, So you maintain an objection to the application for the moment? Uh, yeah, well, the, the uh, considerably reduced hours of uh, for on-sales activity are, are very much welcomed, uh, but I think we can still hear from residents that there is that concern that they could it would still undermine the public nuisance objective. Councillor Peter, is there anything you wanted to ask about? Uh, well, yeah, so in the um, uh, objections from residents here, from North persons, um, there are a number of suggestions as to how um, some of the issues here could be mitigated. Um, if you go from, if people have a pack, um, there's a helpful um, setting out of those suggestions on page 93, which is the final is part of um, appendix C8 um, right at the back of the of this item and in particular I think there's an advertising and promotion idea um, uh, and, and the outside smoking um, uh, restriction Um, but any of the others, if, if Mr. Hopkins or uh, anyone from the applicant wants to comment on, on, on any of the suggestions there, but certainly numbers two and three uh, stood out for me. And D4. Uh, Chair, if I, if I can start on that, I, my, my clients have got no intention of doing what the other irresponsible place up the road did is uh, from what you've said um they certainly won't be hiring kegs out uh, for use in the park nor do they want their customers to go and sit in the park and drink especially if it's got an injunction on it or an, uh, restrictions of pspo um so no they, they would they will not be advertising anything suggesting customers go and sit in the park or in the street come to that um it would, with Hackney's PSPO, I would guess it would be illegal anyway. In fact, I'm aware it's illegal. Uh, so, yes, they'd support that. We have, for uh, Councillor Peterson, we have suggested that um, the four maximum limit would apply at any time for smokers outside. I did offer that in my presentation. It's not limited to 10 pm. It's a small venue and it would, four is it, it's more than enough. So, four people at any time, no drinks outside either. So if that helps you on that, um, I don't know if you mentioned another point, Council, I didn't catch. But just, just to add to that as well, Graham, and just the point that I think uh, Council was raising, that number three at the end, yeah, um, we could we could restrict that to two people smoking outside after 8 p.m. as well. Yeah, we, 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 we'd be happy to do that. And uh, So the, the promotions, um, which is number two there, I mean, I hear what you say about it's not the plan, but... Um, uh, is that something you could give us some reassurance on by conditioning? We we can certainly agree to to not, yeah, not not advertise or encourage that people go and drink in the park. Um, yeah, absolutely, we can we, we can absolutely agree not to do that. Chair, if it helps, perhaps Mr. Digby and Mr. Foster would also agree to a. Uh, the wording of the condition, including the fact that it would be illegal to drink in the park in any case uh, because of the PSPO. Well, no, the PSPO is time limited, um, so we, can, we won't write into a condition. But I personally cannot really support that particular element just in you know, saying they're going to encourage drinking in the park is pretty meaningless. The customers can still do it. It doesn't really have any effect, I'm afraid, in itself. Um, Amanda, are there any new issues you think we haven't explored that you think we should explore? Um, I just wanted to, to confirm, um, because they said they wanted the um, uh, on sales to start from 8 o'clock in the morning, obviously to accommodate these um, de deliveries, is that just Monday to Saturday or it does, does it, is that Sunday as well? Because I thought these are just couriers, I don't know if these couriers work on a Sunday as well, so are they limiting any, or is there any limit on that? 
So that's the off sales. Yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah, off sales. Um, perhaps um, Mr. Digby might like to, to answer that. It's a little difficult for me without having been able to um, ask him, but I can't see the need for the 8 o'clock start for off sales on a Sunday, I must admit. Um, no, on a, well, I mean, if, we're, if we're not, if we weren't even open on a Sunday, there'd be no one there to release the beer. Um, you know, we, we, we've, we're, we're there from, say, 8.30 every day or you know eight every day during the week that's that's why we'd be able to sell it then um i guess on a sunday it would simply be if the, if we're not open then we wouldn't be there to sell it but you are asking for on sales on sunday, on sunday from, from 12 yeah again as i said we might we might even choose that sundays aren't aren't worth it it's not worth our while to be open on a sunday as some of them haven't been um but we'd like the option to. And I guess then if people wanted to come, if they walked by and they wanted to buy a few cans to take home, then we would want the ability to do that. Yeah. Um, could I add something? Um, yes, it's fast I, I just I just wanted to say uh, fr from uh, cans and drinking in the park perspective, um, I'll just say we we actually don't have any cans and we haven't produced cans for probably about a year now, but we will be producing uh, cans. Are we doing a run hopefully next month? Um, but the, the, the main reason is to sell them to beer clubs, and that's purely because um, of the current situation, of pubs shutting down, um, of sales through the through clubs are sort of the real where the money's at at the moment. Um, when things are normal, realistically, we, we concentrate more on keg and cask anyway. Um, Canning for us is very expensive, and we don't. It's sort of um, we prefer not to do it if that's if that's um, of any assurance to anyone. I'd like to move to closing remarks in the next few minutes if I can. Um, Amanda, again, do you think there's anything we haven't asked about at all we should have done? The only other thing is I don't know, um, Chair, if you've noted that there's some comments that have been made um, in the uh, chat. And I don't know whether or not, I'm not saying you need to address it here and now. I don't know whether you want to have an opportunity to quickly check that and see if there's any other questions you want to ask or if you've been reading them as you've gone along. Our normal rule is people shouldn't use the chat to raise substantive points. But I, I think probably you, while people were talking. Grants, I think we've really raised the point about the toilet, we've raised the point about the acoustic being a, an issue is difficult to resolve. No, I'm, I'm going to disregard the rest. So I'm, I think we'll move towards closing remarks in a minute or two. Um, I will try to give you some indication of where I am, um, just so you can all argue against me. It's that I'm quite very sympathetic towards the business, but I'm increasingly kind of find it hard to think we could, how we can make a set of conditions work at the moment, how we can look with a set that's realistic and enforceable without actually destroying the business in the, the way of doing that. So that's where my thinking is going a bit. Um, does anyone want to say anything before I move to closing remarks? Councillor Peters, do you want to add anything? So I do remain very concerned about the noise issue um, and particularly around online sales. Um, I think this is a sound box and it's very close to people's homes and there's just effectively zero noise insulation on the front. Okay, uh, I said I'll move to closing remarks and I take them in the same order as the original remarks. So, um, Mr. Hopkins, do you want to go first? Chair, yes, thank you. Um, note the, the uh, councillor's comments just now. Um, you've heard that Mr. Foster will do what he can and, and work with the authority and the residents to try and dampen the noise down and put something across the front. Your suggestion, the lobby was one he's going to look at. Um, 
the hours for on sales have been considerably reduced, probably by over 50%, I would guess, um, to bring them into a more realistic, and they've, they've also more realistic timing. They've also reduced the terminal hour to bring it back. It's, it's nowhere near the night time we can't in many ways, but they, they bought it back, very small venue. Off sales, obviously, that will be at your discretion, but the early time, as you've heard, is purely for the um, internet orders. And maybe, as Mr. Digby said, somebody might want to buy some cans, but they will support the authority no sales and no taking them to to London fields as far as they can capacity reduced to 20 um, to ask you to look favorably on it chair thank you Stick me. you're mute for the moment I, I don't think i have much more to add than that other than that you know we we will try our very best with the noise uh, and everything and um and we'd love to keep an open dialogue with the with the residents and then so that we're trying and then if we, you know if there's more we can do then we then we will um we really want this tap room we really want our, we really want to be good neighbors and have our neighbors come and enjoy a beer in our tap room ultimately and we want to do everything we can to, to make that possible thank you Mr. foster um apart from what, what um wilson and uh, graham have said uh, yeah i believe we can be very we can be responsible about the noise and um i believe with mitigation measures we can make it even quieter than uh, it is currently okay thank you um mr stewart you're next uh thank you Chair. yes it is a it's In a few part of their, their business, but um, this process seeks to pr promote the license and objectives, and that's um, uh, that's ultimately what any decision has to be has to be based on. I'll leave it there, Chair. Thank you. I think Councillor Bell is frozen. Sorry, I do apologise. Um, it is a technical problem. Um, he will return very shortly. Um, if you could just bear with us a few minutes, please. Thank you. I know the, the meeting will end very shortly. Just bear with us. Thank you. If he has any further questions or anything. Hello everyone, I'm very sorry, I'm terribly embarrassed that this is happening and the timing couldn't have been much worse. And we can mark, David, could you just repeat my plan when I have to repeat this again? Uh, no problem, Chair. I, uh, uh, what I had said was um, that it's obviously, uh, it's a quite difficult uh, application, difficult decision, um, and so sympathise with the, the applicants uh, position as this is obviously a, a key part of their business proposal uh, but ultimately the uh, the licensing process seeks to promote the licensing objectives and uh, it's it's uh, it's it's upon those objectives that any decision has to be made so I'll leave it there chair thank you thank you Kevin um Firstly, thank you for taking on board a lot of the points that I've made in my submission and the, the numbered points. The one that got 
stepped over was um, the seasonal time restriction for takeout sales. I still remain that that's uh, given that the primary mechanism, the primary issue for having the takeout just for deliveries, it would seem like a reasonable request that there's a curtailment of takeout sales in summer months in the early evening to reduce the impact on the park. I stand by that. I still think it's a reasonable requirement. And while I'm pleased to hear that you've taken on board a lot of the other ones around the smoking and the numbers outside, I still think that suggestion one seasonal time restrictions for takeout sales doesn't impact on the delivery aspect of the service, but would act to the improve, uh, would uh, would reduce the impact on London fields. Um, and so I, I would hope that the the committee would still view that condition if you do, if you are minded to grant a license. Thank you very much for your time. So can I just say we'd be happy to do that, I think, as well. We'd be happy to restrict if, if that was, if that would help. And yeah, if we said at weekends, no off sales after, after 7 p.m. or something like that, then I'm sure we'd be, we we could do that. I'm I'll be I appreciate the the the, the offer, Wilson. I really do. And I, my primary issue, and just to make it really clear, is primarily over the summer period. So it's um, I'm not like most of the time it's not an issue. I'm primarily interested over the summer period because that's when late night drinking in the parks are the most significant issue. So I appreciate the offer. Thank you very much. I understand. We can we can we can do that. The reason why we normally don't do seasonal things is it makes license more complicated, makes enforcing it more difficult. So as a general rule, we don't go down that road of doing things that are only for a period of during the year. We try to have licenses that are work all year round if possible. Um, it's not impossible, but it's un unlikely. Gala, do you want to come in next? Um, well, just really to reiterate, I'm really, really very concerned about um, this possible license just on the um, increase of noise and the cumulative effects of, sort of the negative immunity on our on our living in our in our house and, our, and, and on my um, on my daughter's um, you know, sleep basically with her bedroom opposite. So uh, I just don't think it's feasible. Um, you know, I support them as a business, but. Uh, not as a uh, licensed premises to sell anything um, on site. Thank you, Louise. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, I mean, we, we are very concerned um, about the bar, the impact on residential immunity, and the key issue, I think, is noise. Um, we've witnessed it during the summer uh, with the Thames, and I appreciate the conditions that have been put in place, but um, they don't give us enough comfort that noise can be controlled. Um, as I've mentioned, the limit on, in terms of the size of the premises really does restrict what can be done in terms of noise attenuation. Um, even with the shutter closed, uh, the applicants have said they want the door open so that people know they are open. So that would lead to noise breakout. Um, so I don't believe um, that they um, can meet the licensing objectives and I think the application should be refused. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Polly. Yeah, thanks. Um, I would still like to um, keep my objections remain the same um, and I would like this application to be refused on the same grounds. Uh, I think Takeout sales is uh, too much. I think toilets are too few. Uh, but most importantly, uh, noise is going to be a problem. And uh, most importantly, I just don't think you've consulted the community. We, we've got plenty of other businesses in the street. Uh, we are reasonable neighbours. We have great conversations with them. Uh, you haven't really taken us seriously as local residents. And I think uh, it's time that you engage with both your neighbours and London Fields user group. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Peters, any final clarifications from you? No. All right, can I thank everyone for tolerating my IT? Um, I don't think I'm doing actually, actually doing anything wrong, but it's still quite embarrassing and annoying when it happens. Um, as I explained earlier, if you look for our website and go to calendar of meetings and find this meeting, then hopefully maybe one day, maybe more likely Tuesday, a decision will appear as a heading called Printed Decisions, and it'll give you the decision for the moment. Thank you all for attending uh, tonight, and see you all perhaps again in another capacity. Bye.